Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's tutorial, part three of the Raspberry Pi camera series, I'll be showing you how to stream video from your Raspberry Pi camera to your local computer in real time. As you could see here with this stream, I can go to on my local computer and view updates from my Raspberry Pi camera. Now, for those of you guys who have been following this video series, I showed how to do this exact same thing in part one. However, I showed how to do it with a Raspberry Pi official camera that fits into the Raspberry Pi slot of your Raspberry Pi. Instead, in this video, we'll be doing the exact same thing but we'll be using a USB based camera instead. And this is per request for some of my viewers in the comment section. They wanted to see this because the implementation is a little different to support USB based cameras. So we'll be using the Pi Camera 2 library as opposed to Pi Camera uh, 1 or 0. And so I'll be walking you through step by step on the code level and on the package level of how to set that up. And this is the camera I'm using for your reference. It is the Ardu Cam 180p. So it is on Amazon, as you could see, really cheap relatively to other cameras on the market. And it is a USB based camera. So you could see it does plug into the USB port on the Raspberry Pi. So enough being said, if you are using a USB based camera and you want to use the Pi Camera 2 library to stream video in real time, this is the video for you. Enough being said, let's get started. Okay, so the first step is we just want to sign into our Raspberry Pi and have some way of interacting with our Raspberry Pi to install the packages and write code. Right now, I am using Visual Studio Code for my local computer to SSH and write code and do terminal commands on my Raspberry Pi. I have a YouTube series where I show you guys how to do this. Really, you could just sign into your Raspberry Pi and do everything I'm showing you here. I just prefer using Visual Studio Code on my remote desktop to be able to code on the Raspberry Pi. So imagine you are signed into your Raspberry Pi. You just want to open a terminal. I am in Visual Studio Code and you could just go to new terminal. If you are on your Raspberry Pi, you could just open a terminal on the top left and it should be equivalent. And then once you are in that terminal, we just want to install the system level packages we need to be able to run the code I'm about to show you to create that video stream. So first things first, we just want to update the system level installer on the Raspberry Pi. So we could just go to sudo apt update. And this is always good practice before you start any project on the Raspberry Pi to make sure you're up to date with your apt, which is the Raspberry Pi system level installer for packages. So we can see where we already are and we just want to install three packages. So if you already followed part one, you probably have one of these packages, which is Flask, but we also want to install OpenCV, which will allow us to do some byte level operations easily on the images. So we can send bytes over the video stream to our local computer. And we also want to use the Pi Camera 2 library, which is obviously the most important library here that will allow us to create that camera object to connect to our USB based camera and actually take continuous images to send over the video stream. So now that we have this command ready to go, we just go ahead and click enter. I already ran this command, so it should be quick. And if you guys still ha are having issues when you run the code that I show you in this video after in terms of the libraries, you can actually do other methods to install these packages. You can actually pip install these packages. So if you, are, if, if you are having issues, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be more than happy to try to guide you there to let you know that you can do other means, such as pip installing or other methods to actually get these libraries installed. So now that we have those libraries installed, the next thing we want to do is we just want to create a Python file on your Raspberry Pi. So you can see I already have the Python file already created. It's called testarducam.py. And let me just zoom out a tiny bit so you guys can see this code at a higher level. So it's really, really simple code. Just like the first video, it essentially does the same thing. So what we're doing in this code is we are creating a Flask app. So Flask is just a, a framework in Python that allows us to create servers really simply within a few lines of code. So I'm not gonna get into Flask in detail in this video, but we're, we already talked about it in part one to some degree. Now, Pi Camera 2, of course, is the latest version of the Pi Camera library that is supported by the Raspberry Pi community. So this is really important because as opposed to the Pi Camera library we showed in part one, that's going to be deprecated. So we wanna learn how to use Pi Camera 2. So we just import that here, as you can see, really simply. And we have this CV2. Now, CV2 is a very in-depth library. You can do a lot of magic with that library. We're just using CV2 to simply do some encoding on the image and convert it to bytes and send it over that, that server endpoint to our local computer. So that's all we're using CV2 for, is to convert essentially the information from the image so we can create it in a format to send over to our local computer for our local computer to be able to interpret the format of the image. So that's all you're gonna have to know about CV2 in this video. There is a lot you can do with that library. We're not gonna get into it in this tutorial. So next we also create the Flask app as you could see after doing all of those imports. So this is just how you initialize a Flask app. 
And then we just want to create that camera object, very simple, and just configure the camera properties. So this is essentially what we're telling how the, the dimensions of the frame we want to see in other formats of the camera. You can do a lot with this Ardu cam. I believe it has some night vision, I think, and some other properties. You can play around with this and read more about this online. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit just so you guys can see that. So that is create preview configuration. So you're just essentially messing with the configuration of the image on the screen that you guys saw at the beginning of this video. Then once we have that, we just go ahead and we start the camera, very simple. And then we define this generate frames function. So what this generate frames function is doing, it's just capturing an image from the camera, converting it, converting it to a format we can stream over the, the URL to our local computer and doing some HTTP response format here. Once again, we're not gonna get into that. Just know this allows us to stream over that URL to our local computer. So we have to format it like this. And then we just define an endpoint in our Flask app. So this is the endpoint we're going to go to on our Raspberry Pi, or on our local computer, I should say, when we want to view the video stream on our local computer. And what that endpoint does, it simply generates a response that we're going to get from the, the Flask app. And that response contains this generate frames. So it calls this generate frames function and just passes it as a MIME multi-part. So we have to pass it in like that so we can interpret it in our local computer and render it on the screen. And finally, once that is all said and done and you have the code ready, you could just go ahead and run this app on the port 5000 in the host 0.0.0.0. So in order to get this to actually be viewable on your local computer on your Raspberry Pi in this video, you actually have to be on the same local network as your Raspberry Pi as well. So make sure your Raspberry Pi and your local computer are both connected to the same Wi-Fi for this to be able to work. I did show in part two how to be able to view video streams that aren't on your local network. So you can go ahead and watch that. I'll link that right here. And once everything is said and done, you have the libraries and you have this code ready and copied. I'll have the code in the description down below. So you can just click that link and go view the code if you don't want to copy. You can just go ahead and run this code. So really as simple as that, really simple code. And we could just go ahead and run this code by typing in Python 3. Or if you are logged into your Raspberry Pi, you could just click the play button in Thani or whatever IDE you're using. And we could just say Python 3 test arducam.py. And let's just go ahead and run that. So if we did everything properly here, we should see it up and running. So let's go ahead and close this. So it is running. And then we just want to see how that looks on our local computer. All right, so now that we have our Flask app up and running, we can just go to a browser on our local computer and just type in the IP address followed by colon port 5000 and then followed by forward slash video feed to actually go to the stream and our Flask app. If you guys don't know how to get this value right here, you could just go to the terminal on your Raspberry Pi. I already showed this in part one, but I'll show it again just in case you haven't watched part one. So you could just go to the terminal, type in if config, and then you just want to get this value right here. So mine will probably be different than yours. This is just the IP address of your Raspberry Pi on your local network. You could just go ahead and copy that in and substitute it for this value here. So once we have that, we can just click enter and we can see if you did everything correctly, you will see the video feed in real time, which is awesome. So it looks like we got it to work. So pat yourself on the back if you got it to work as well. And if we go ahead and move the camera, we'll show you how responsive it is. And overall, just a really crisp and robust video feed as opposed to part one, where I think this one is a little better than the Pi camera or the Raspberry Pi camera video feed. So I think this camera is a little more expensive and just a little better than the first one. So yeah, it looks like we got it to work. If you guys did, please consider donating to the channel in the link down below because I know uh, time is money. So if I did save you time and you got this to work, please consider donating. If not, consider to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel because that means a lot to me. We just hit 2K subscribers on the channel. So I just want to thank you guys a lot. That is a big milestone for me. So hopefully 5K and 10K to come within the next year or so with your continuous support. If you guys are having any issues with this video at all, whether it's the libraries or anything, let me know in the comment section down below. My subscribers have been very useful in responding to some of my fellow subscribers before I have in detail. So we're developing a really nice community on this YouTube channel. So you could just go ahead and ask questions and a lot of people will respond, including myself to try and help you as best as we can. And if you guys wanna see more videos with this camera series, I'll be more than glad to do that because I'm really having a blast working with these Raspberry Pi cameras. 
and I'm just having a good time. This is part three. Hopefully, we'll make a part four if you guys want to see something. In fact, this video itself came from a suggestion on my comments. So I take comments very highly and readily from you guys. And a lot of my videos are inspired from the comments. So enough being said, I do not want to take any more of your time. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next video, everyone. I love y'all.